All right, so welcome everyone to our unit uh, zero, sort of uh, covering all of the necessary information and knowledge that you're going to need going into a calculus class like this before we start unit one. Now, uh, first and foremost, if you did not pass a pre-calculus class, click off this video now. You need a pre-calculus class in order to take this class. That's why pre-calculus exists. Trust me, don't try and take this class without pre-calc. I tried to do that. It's not fun. It doesn't work. It just... Just take pre-calc. Anyway, so moving on from there, uh, let's go into a little bit of a description of exactly the relationship between calculus A, B, and B, C, because a lot of people aren't very familiar on this. So the way uh, calculus A, B, and B, C work is that calculus A, B, and B, C are the same exact course, okay? So uh, let me say, for example, this these aren't the real numbers, by the way. Let's say, for example, that Calculus AB has 7 units, and Calculus BC has 10 units, okay? Calculus AB units 1 through 7 are the same as Calculus BC units 1 through 7. The only difference between these two courses is that BC has 3 extra units, okay? If you took Calculus AB, and then you took the 3 extra units of Calculus BC, you would know everything in Calculus BC, all right? So the main difference in your school, if you're taking this out of school, is uh, just BC would be going through the material slightly faster than AB. But up until like unit seven, I'm not sure if that's the cutoff point, again, we're using made up numbers, but up until unit seven, you'd be learning the same course. All right, now, little disclaimer here, this, uh, this little video series is intended for those of you who are self-studying at home. Now, what that means is that we're not alienating all of the people who are learning this in school. What that means is that we're going to be going into a lot more depth and a lot more explanation because we're treating this course as if it's the first time you're being exposed to the material, which makes it a great study tool for all people. Regardless of whether you've already went over this material in class, it's a great in-depth review instead of the short, like, skim, brief summaries you find other, at other places on YouTube. But, you know, my main logic for creating this is because I'm a self-study student. I self-studied pretty much 16 or 17 AP courses, and I could not find something like this on YouTube, so I'm making it for you guys. Anyway, let's get into the actual math prerequisite knowledge you're going to need. Now, recall in uh, pre-calc that one of the main topics we had that you guys focused on was this thing called factoring, okay? Where if I gave you something like uh, x squared minus 1 over x plus 1, we're going to say f of x equals this, okay? You'd immediately, light bulbs would start going off in your head, and you'd be able to start factoring this into x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1. Okay, this is ringing any bells, this is making sense, good, I'm glad. Okay, then what we would do is we would bring this guy down here, and we would say, okay, we get x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1, and then we would cancel these guys, and then we would say this equals x minus 1. Okay? Let me show you why this is false. Okay, this is one misconception that we need to clear up now before we pr proceed with calculus. Okay, so let me draw the graph of this for you. Okay, let's, let's draw it right here. So this right here is going to be this graph from this function. It's going to look a little something like this. Okay, uh, we learned about discontinuities in pre-calc. I hope this is reminding you of stuff. We have a discontinuity here at x equals um, negative 1, because if we look here in our denominator, we when we plug in negative 1 into our denominator, we get a 0 in the denominator, which is a discontinuity. However, as we just showed, it's a removable discontinuity. Okay, we remember removable discontinuities, they happen at just a point, they happen at just this open circle right here. All right, makes sense. This function right here 
f of x equals x minus 1, if we draw that graph, there's no discontinuity there, okay? Because if we plug in x equals negative 1 into here, there's no divide by 0 error, there's no discontinuity. Therefore, these are not the same graph, and x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 does not equal x minus 1, okay? This is a very important topic that I want you guys to look at and understand right now. Now, let me go a little further with this. x squared minus 1 over x plus 1 equals x minus 1, comma, except when, when x equals negative 1. All right, that is the correct way of writing it, and that is a true statement. This is false. This is true. Okay, because they are indeed the same graph, except at x equals negative 1, because that's where we see the difference. There's only one difference, and it's in that removable discontinuity. Okay? You'll see this topic pop up when we do limits in the next few videos, which is unit 1 of calculus. But this is a very important misconception that a lot of kids come in from pre-calc with, and I needed to clear it up right now. Also, I would highly recommend that you do a little, uh, you know, one-day review of all your pre-calc stuff, you know, stuff like uh, synthetic division, stuff like finding roots, finding zeros of graphs, finding x-intercepts, finding y-intercepts. Uh, figuring out when stuff like uh, some constancy over x or something like rad x, find out when these types of functions are discontinuous. You know, remember, this is when you cover domain and range, etc., etc. Because all the topics in pre-calc are uh, topics that you are required to have down to second nature once you start taking a calculus class. There's a reason this course is a prerequisite, so make sure you've mastered all these materials, make sure you've mastered everything before you start to come here. Uh, if you are looking for more practice on pre-calc uh, before you jump into Unit 1, highly recommend Khan Academy. Um, and as we start going f uh, forward into the actual AP units, I'm going to start recommending you guys other resources that I've encountered of my years of self-study, okay? This is the main appeal I have to this channel, is I'm someone who's self-studied 16 courses. I know exactly what any situation you could possibly be going through. I have solutions for all of you. If you need anything that I don't explicitly say, I've got a Discord server. Come on, send me a Discord message, ask me questions, whatever. I'm here for you guys. Oh, yes, one more thing. Um, trigonometry. Uh, stuff like sine, cosine, tangent, uh, secant, cosecant, cotangent, uh, the unit circle, the graphs of all the trigonometric functions. Um, in, when we go, come into calculus, uh, we're going to need to be proficient with trigonometry to a degree that I'm assuming a lot of us did not get to in pre-calc. Okay, that's definitely what was the case for me. Uh, when I went through pre-calc, we definitely did not cover trig as in-depth as we needed to, to get prepared for calc. So um, I'm going to put on screen, and I'm going to link in the description, it's just an image of all of my notes on the more advanced uh, trig stuff that you guys are going to need to know for this, uh, for going into calc. Uh, one thing that's not on those notes is uh, the unit circle. The unit circle is, you know, I'm, I'm sure all of you know it. I'm sure all of you are able to, you know, take 10 minutes, draw it out on a piece of paper, and uh, find all the, all the uh, values if you need to. But we don't, 10 minutes is too long, okay? My point to you being, you need to memorize the unit circle. The, the unit circle needs to become something like second nature to you. Okay, because the unit circle helps you with not only just the values of sine, cosine, etc. It helps, it helps you with things like your 45-45-90 uh, triangles, uh, your 30-60-90 uh, triangles. You know, if we uh, come here to pi over 4, or uh, as some of you like to call it, uh, I think it's 60 degrees? No, it's 45 degrees. That's another thing. 
that uh, you guys need to become familiar with in calculus. We almost never deal with degrees. You need to convert everything into radians. So you need to be proficient with radians. If you learn the entire unit circle in degrees, you're going to have to relearn the entire thing in radians. Okay? So at pi over 4 radians, uh, we've got 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay? And we can help, this can help us uh, remember our formulas for the x, x, x red 2 sides of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Same thing with the uh, 30, 60, 90s. So this is 5 pi over 3 radians. We've got our 60 degree angle, our 30 degree angle. I'm sure you guys remember all of this. This is our uh, x side, this is our 2x side, and this is our x red 3. Make sure you've got the entire unit circle down packed. Make sure you know exactly how to convert between radians and degrees, if you need a little refresher on that. Um, radians times 180 equals degrees, and from that you can algebraically manipulate it to get degrees over 180 equals radians. Okay, so just do a super in-depth trig review. Um, I've got my screenshot uh, hopefully on the screen right now. And in the description, review all of that. Make sure you've downpacked on everything with trig and triangles and the unit circle. Because we're going to be picking up with all of that pretty heavily in the second video on limits. Uh, I think that's everything, guys. Uh, see you in the next video. And as always, enjoy life.